Hello students, welcome back to Clary Concepts, Unleashing Conceptual Learning. Today in this lecture, we will be deriving the Euler's energy equation motion, Euler's equation of motion basically, right? And uh, before I go on to derivation part, I would like to inform you about its importance. See, most of the industries which are process or power, they are equipped with the lot of pipes and uh, you know, uh, uh, pipes uh, wherein the fluids are transferring from one place to other place. Now, in this entire process, if you want to measure that at what particular section, what is the energy of the fluid flowing or whether the, whether the, whether the devices are optimally performing or not like compressors and pumps, you need to understand this Euler's equation of motion because it is the basis from where the energy can be quantified in a fluid flowing through the pipe. Okay. So, let us first talk about the delay of the equation. So, let us say for example, I have the pipe whose pipe and the fluid is flowing in let us say some direction and if I just mark the coordinate system x and y and uh, the flow direction is, uh, is defined by this particular line. Now, let us say I have the cylindrical fluid element and if I zoom into this element which is a very small element if I zoom into that to give you more clarity. So, let us say this fluid element is flowing from here to here and this direction is suppose direction s. So, I would just mention the length of the fluid element let us say it is ds and the area the cross sectional area is suppose da small element right. Now, what we will do is as per the uh, energy equation we can say that summation of forces acting along s direction should be equals to mass of the element and acceleration of the element along s direction right. So, now what we will be doing is we will try to see what are the forces acting on this element. So, one of the major force acting on the element will be weight force which is downward w. Let us say that the angle between this and this is theta and now uh, this is weight body force. Now, what are the surface forces? Surface force will act on this phase. Let us say pressure over here is P and force will be P times dA because pressure into area if you are aware of right. Similarly, on this phase pressure force will be acting in opposite direction. So, pressure over here is P then I can say pressure over here is some P plus dP for example. Now, student normally get confused over here that why dP? See dP does not mean that pressure is increasing. The value of dP itself can also be negative. So, pressure may also decrease. So, plus and does not indicate that I am taking in general pressure is increasing. Okay. But whenever we want to represent that there is some change in pressure value, we should generally represent as P plus dP. If there is no change, dP will be 0. If pressure would have been increasing, dP will be positive number. If pressure would have been decreasing, dP will be negative number. So, but in general, if you want to represent there is some change, I represent P plus dP, where dP represents the change in pressure in reference to the pressure over here. Now, multiply by area to get the force, right? This is the pressure force. So, now if you talk about S to be positive in this direction, so this force is positive force, this is negative value because it is opposite to S. But what about weight force? Weight can be resolved in two components. Let me resolve the weight into two components. One is this and one is normal to this. So, this normal component will be W sin theta and this component will be W cos theta, isn't it? So, sin theta will not play a role in the S direction only W cos theta will play a role. So, now let me put the values. So, I can say that P d A minus P plus d P into d A minus W cos theta should be equals to what? Mass into acceleration. What is mass? Mass of the body will be mass of this element will be what? Volume of the element into density. So, density of the element is rho let us say and what is volume? It is d A into d S. So, d S length into cross sectional area d A is the volume. So, d S into d A. This is mass right. What is acceleration of this element? Acceleration will be d V by d T. Yes, of this fluid element. Now, if you open this bracket, you will get P d A minus P d A minus d P d A minus w what is w weight of the element weight is what mass into gravitational acceleration so this is directly mass which we have calculated what is mass density into volume that is ds into da into g will give me the weight w and then cos theta as it is will be equals to i am rearranging the terms over here rho da dv and i'll put ds by dt so this is just change of the variables right i am putting the change of the variable so what is now we will look at this this is get cancelled minus dp into da minus rho da g ds i will take on the right hand side so ds cos theta is equals to rho 
DA, DV. What is DS by DT? DS is the change in position along S direction with respect to time. That is nothing but again velocity V. Right. Now, look at this. What is DS cos theta? I will put these other variables as it is. DP into DA minus rho DAG. What is DS cos theta? So, if you look at this element, I can say length is DS. So, I can put length as DS. Now, if I can put this triangle, so this length, vertical length is let us say dz and this is angle theta. So, can you say that cos theta is equals to dz that is adjacent by hypotenuse ds. So, therefore, dz will be equals to ds cos theta. So, therefore, in place of ds cos theta, can I put dz that is equals to rho da v db. Now you see what I will do is I will take both this term on the right hand side and will take the equation and then the, the equation entirely will equate to 0. But before that I will take da common and cancel from both the sides. So what I will be left with is rho into v dv plus dp plus rho g dz equals to 0. Now divide the entire equation by rho. So what will happen is divide everywhere by rho. So you will get v dv plus dp by rho plus g dz equals to 0. Let me rearrange the terms from, I will take pressure terms in the front, then v dv velocity terms and then g dz potential terms. So this is said to be the Euler's equation of motion, Euler's equation of motion which you are looking for, isn't it? So, I hope you understood how to derive the Euler's equation of motion. We will use this equation to derive the Bernoulli's theorem and Bernoulli's equation will be used inherently to figure out the uh, energy content of the fluid flowing through a pipe at different, different sections. Thank you so much. See you in the next class.